Last week, General Milley's viral comments on critical race theory sparked Fox News anchors to go into full Karen mode. Laura Ingraham took a note from progressives and called for defunding the military. We are sending our tax dollars to this military to in an attempt to weed out so-called extremists, which just means conservative evangelicals, as far as I can tell. Uh, we're paying for that? Why, why is Congress not saying we're not going to give you a penny until all of this is eradicated from the military budget? Nothing. This is my offer to you. Nothing. That's what I would say. I'm, I'm, to I'm totally outraged by him and his ridiculous response today. Sorry, Congressman. I'm not sure that's Karen mode. I think a lot of people would agree with that around the country. MSNBC also proceeded to act like the U.S. would somehow lose its military budget because Laura Ingraham or Tucker Carlson said so. Let's take a look at that. Representative Houlihan, I guess that I'll throw it to you. Are Democrats prepared to go out there and explain to voters that it's Republicans who now want to defund the military? They tried to use defund the police, which is, by the way, DOA as a thing, right? It, it look at New York City, where they just elected the most pro-cop person to be mayor, or at least they're close to it. That's not a thing. Defund the military is a thing. They're saying it on Fox. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Journalist right. and co-founder of Inquire More, Zed Jelani, is here with us to make sense of this. So, Zed, make sense of this. What is going on between the right and the left? Is the right now wanting to defund the military because there's this bloat when it comes to promoting these programs like Critical Race Theory? As we've seen, actually, some people uncover some really interesting stuff about what is being taught in those ranks. Um, and is, is Fox and our people on the right, do you think they're going to go for that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I don't think so. The the military is like one of the biggest kind of informal welfare programs that the United States has, right? Like we spend, you typically over seven hundred fifty billion, something like that, on the on the budget. And you know, we have weapons programs that are designed to be split up and and produced in multiple states and districts because if you were to ever cut them, it'd be cutting tons of jobs. Uh, so I don't really think anyone's going to try to defund the military because they didn't like what one general was doing or they don't like some of the trainings or programs within the military, you might see more oversight and you might see more theatrics, I think, at these hearings on both sides, by the way, I think by both the members of Congress and by General Milley. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly what the, the point of his remarks were uh, necessarily. Um, but also, there's another thing here, which is that the military is generally a, a really well-respected institution, uh, generally polls best of like in one of the any kind of American civic or governing institution. So I think everyone always wants to say the military is on their side. Uh, so mm -hmm. I think when the left sees General Milley, you know, make these remarks, they're like, okay, this guy is with us. Uh, we can use the military stature and authority to, to describe why some of this is necessary. Whereas the right feels almost betrayed, right? Like, oh, these are our guys. You know, they're not supposed to be, you know, talking like liberals or talking like progressives. Um, and you've seen that on other issues. Like, you know, the, it's very common for the environmental movement to say the military says climate change is a national security threat. Um, you know, it, it's it's not an unusual tactic, I think, kind of de selectively deploy the military in that regard. Uh, of course, the military is not an elected institution. You know, when he elected General Milley, he's not supposed to be setting social policy for the United States. But just because I think it's such a respected institution, you're going to see both sides kind of argue over it, wrangle over it, and try to use it as a mascot, I think, for whatever their agenda is. So it's not kind of, it's not super surprising that it kind of became a partisan thing, uh, and then we had this little food fight over the last week. He's such a weird mascot for the left, and that gets into exactly what you're talking about. I mean, he had no idea what he was talking about, and the left sort of rallied behind him and was cheering for it because it sort of sounded vaguely like something that they've been promoting, even though it wasn't even a very smart articulation of what they've been promoted, promoting. Ryan, you responded to the Joy Reid clip on Twitter asking, who's going to invade us if we cut the military budget? And as shoe on head notes here, our military budget dwarfs other major world powers on a substantial level. Do you want to build on that point, Ryan? Yeah, and so, and, and Zed, I want to get your reaction to this. My, my colleague, uh, Sarah Sirota over at The Intercept, who used to cover the Air Force, made an, made an interesting point, which said, and to your point, does Milley believe this stuff? No. no, there's no reason to think that he does. So why is the military doing this? And her argument is that it's actually about China, that the military sees its, its prime competitor, per, the, the country that it's competing against as, as China, and in order to compete against China, they feel like they, they need to recruit the the, the best minds that they can in science and technology from this younger generation. The younger generation 
Yeah. Millie has been told believes all of these things. <laughs> this is what the kids are saying. This is what the kids are saying. Yeah. You got to get the smart kids. Mm. And so therefore you need to say these things, even if it bothers Tom Cotton. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to say these things because if you don't, you're going to get canceled. Mm -hmm. And if it becomes, uh, you know, if it becomes a cancelable thing for a, a, an engineer or a scientist to go work for the U.S. military, uh, then you're, you can't recruit, you can't com then uh, compete with China. Not defending this strategy, but Zed, do you think that this is actually more or less what's going on here? Yeah, I mean, there's that. I mean, because remember the uh, the CIA recruitment video? Yeah, uh, right. Kind of woke CIA recruitment. Like, it was they, inspiring. They yeah, I think they have that mentality. And they also have the mentality that, you know, the Democrats control Congress, right? So Millie and mm. everyone else who comes to testify they want to say things the Democrats like because they control their appropriations, right? Like they're 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 sort of doing internal politics as well, and within Washington D.C., um, it, it's fine if Tom Cotton gets mad at them. Tom Cotton has presidential aspirations, though, right? He's not necessarily the guy who's going to be in charge of the next budget. You know, the yeah. Democrats could be in charge of the next budget. Um, so yeah, I think that there's there's one yeah there's the HR strategy, which is they have this perception about who they're recruiting. Two, there's the internal domestic politics of D.C. And three, you know, sometimes people in government just aren't the smartest people in the world. Like, you know, there, there probably are some people in government who think that if they read Robin D'Angelo, they'll be able to find white supremacists in the in the military. Which, by the way, there have been instances of that. There was actually very recently an instance of um, uh, an ex-marine and I believe a, a sheriff in Georgia being arrested by the FBI or someone in the federal government uh, for some kind of white supremacist plot. So, you know, those things do exist, although you're not. You know, it isn't a great guide to them to read whatever is hot in pop culture right now, necessarily. Right. Yeah, and to me, social justice advocates should be ashamed if they, if if it if it is the case that the U.S. military and the CIA CIA can win their allegiance just by changing their vo vocabulary. So, former President Trump uh, also weighed in. Our military will be incapable of fighting and incapable of taking orders. You're going to tell some private private stand up. You stand up right now. I'm not standing up. You can't talk to me that way, General. We're going to have a whole different ballgame here. I don't know how they're going to work that out. The, the private's going to tell the general, don't you ever speak to me that way, General. I'll kick your ass. That's our military. That's where we're going. Woke. I know some of these guys. Boy, they changed quickly. They went right over to the other side. I heard that about a couple of them. The military brass have become weak and ineffective leaders, and our enemies are watching and they're laughing. I love how he goes between his riffs back to the script on the teleprompter. <laughs> uh, but something so interesting about Trump is how he, because he doesn't really have allegiance to either side, taps into the, like, weirdly will stumble into these completely accurate diagnoses. Like in this one, where he's saying, They'll go either way. He's like, I know some of these guys. And to the point that both Zed and Ryan, you were making, you're like, it, it's, it's, it's posturing for the sake of a political expediency in their own existence. Do Democrats fall for this, Zed? I mean, the Joy Regman, the Reed segment is kind of interesting for the fact that it does seem like, yes, they are falling for it. And they're going to be, uh, they're going to act differently when it comes to controlling the purse strings of the military budget the more they hear people in the military talking like this. Yeah, I mean, I think they, like I said, the military is such a revered institution that just having them even take your side, even superficially in a culture war, I think, you know, feels good to a lot of people. And, you know, it, it's even, it's funny with Trump, like Trump hired General Milley to be head of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, right? Like he's he knows not, him. <laughs> Trump has a reputation of hiring people and then later denouncing them or like saying that they're not actually that great, but like he's the one who hired them in the first place. And, you know, but, but it, it works the other way too, right? Like you... You have someone of significant stature that you can kind of denounce or, or feel rebellious against. And I think so the right, like I said, I think what Millie was saying felt, you know, it played into the into the hands of both the left and the right. They both kind of enjoyed, you know, having someone uh, up there not talking necessarily seriously about pol military policy, budget size, you know, force, what, you know, should the United States be in combat still with, um, you know, Iran back security groups, which we all so kind of support when we're not bombing them. Uh, you know, we can talk about all that or we can just have General Milley weigh in on, you know, the, the thing that everyone in every school board in America is talking about right now, which he doesn't really have a whole lot of connection to, um, but they, they're doing it anyway. So yeah, I do think the Democrats kind of enjoy 
you know, anytime they feel like they can act tough, like if a, a cop or the military or the CIA or the FBI is actually on their side about something, they love it. You know, they, they feel like, you know, they're not beta males anymore, right? They have they have this like general, like this esteemed guy on their side. And, and and meanwhile, I think the Republicans like feeling rebellious, like, oh, we're not just you know, stiff upper lip, you know, siding with the military every time we can we can fight the power, we can fight the man too. So, you know, the the role reversal is not entirely uh, surprising or unpredictable. So and you know, sometimes it stems from cynicism and then other times it's just like pure idiotic hypocrisy. Zed, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. So next on Rising, author of Goliath, The 100-Year War Between Monopoly Power and Democracy, Matt Stoller, joins us to discuss why Congress just recently voted to break up big tech. Stay with us. <laughs>